Gemini for Workspace, both business and enterprise, is here. But should you buy it? What's it do? What's it cost? This and many more questions are going to be answered in this video. This is going to be a big one, so let's get to it. In the last year, over a million people from thousands of different companies used generative AI through Duet AI in Workspace. This is obviously something that's here to stay, and finally, moving from crazy buzzword to something that is actually useful. For those just starting out, Gemini is Google's name for their suite of AI products across the portfolio. This includes the Gemini AI chat experience, this includes integration in Google Cloud from a development standpoint, as well as, of course, Google Workspace. This video, however, is only going to be covering Gemini for Google Workspace. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that Gemini is also the name of Google's latest AI model. Gemini is our largest and most capable model. It means that Gemini can understand the world around us in the way that we do uh, and absorb any type of input and output. So not just text like most models, but also code, audio, image, and video. This is something lots of people have poked fun at Google over for the last couple of months, years, how long has this been going on for? Where Google continuously rolls out different names. You've got Bard, you've got Duet AI, now you have Gemini, there are other iterations of it as well. Google's also invested in, in Claude, which is Anthropics, Chatbot. All of that though is going away, although I don't know much about Claude. As far as Google's AI strategy, everything is behind Gemini. Gemini is the name of Google's latest and greatest model, yes, Similar to ChatGTP 3.5, 4, etc., and into the future, Google is all about Gemini moving forward. The model that's being used here is called Gemini 1.0. Regardless of what Google names its models going forward, I have been told that the Gemini name, as far as the name of Google's suite of products in AI, is here to stay. Although I have a feeling, given that they named Gemini Ultra 1.0, it's likely that that's going to stick around for a little while as a model name, where it will become 1.5. 2.0, 2.5, and of course the three different tiers, which we'll get to later. But what does it do? Well, anybody who has any experience with Duet AI, which is obviously the previous version of this, which was announced, I don't know, a year and a half ago, a year ago, and already was rolled out to a lot of customers, this will all seem very familiar. On that note, as I mentioned before, the Duet AI name is gone. Google has moved on from that, and as everything else is all coming under the same umbrella of Gemini. Anybody in the last year who had purchased Duet Enterprise that is automatically already converted to Gemini Enterprise. Even I'm getting confused saying the names. Duet AI, Gemini AI, Duet AI, Gemini AI, AI, Gemini AI, 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 AI. Some of the things they can do is help you read and write emails, help you summarize and write documents, or perhaps help with the blank page paralysis problem. Say that five times fast. It can help you create slideshows, analyze spreadsheets. Essentially, it does a lot of the busy work for you. Now, anybody who's been paying attention to the space over the last, I don't know, year, two years or so, will know that this is a very rapidly developing area. The products that they've announced just for this have only been around and able to be done for the last, I don't know, couple of months. OpenAI just announced last week a new video model, which they can, from a prompt, create a video of what you asked for. For example, they said, I think it was, a, uh, what was it, a woman? I'll have to post the prompt in the video up here later. But it was a, a woman walking down the street in Tokyo in the rain or something to that effect, hyper-realistic, and it created a video that didn't look like total garbage. Now, Google hasn't announced that capability yet, although they have seemingly caught up in the image generation area, I'm sure that's coming very soon. But as far as what it can do with workspace features, also keep in mind that these are rapidly developing and there are going to be continuing announcements in the next couple of weeks. All right, let's get into the nerdy stuff. We've covered what Gemini is, we've covered that it's a model, but the Gemini for workspace, what AI model is this running? Well, Gemini, of course. If you saw the Gemini model announcements, you will know that there are three tiers. The first one is Nano, is designed for use on Google's Pixel devices, for example. Small cell phone-like devices which are able to do, at the very edge, low-level processing that doesn't require going out the, over the internet, out to the cloud, and processing on large and very expensive equipment. The second level is called Pro, and that's what is running on a lot of the consumer stuff and anything that you, if you just go to gemini.google.com right now, previously bar.google.com right now, you're going to be able to access on there. It's not quite as good as Ultra. Ultra 1.0, starting to sound like the Apple naming scheme here for iPhones. Gemini Ultra 1.0, or is it 1.0 Ultra, is the latest and greatest model as I mentioned earlier in the video. This does compare to GPT 4.0 from OpenAI. 
this is the model that you're going to get access to if you subscribed to I can't even say the name this is the model that you're going to get access to if you subscribe to Gemini for workspace business or enterprise I'll get into in a minute what those two different tiers have one thing to note that for the first time this is what's called a multimodal model spelled I think the same way but what that means is that this is a lot better at handling more complex uh, requests or prompts it's able to handle things like images so you could give it an image and say tell me what's in this image analyze this image etc as well as more complex code and taking context from your previous prompts or questions but is my data safe should I use this with my organization yes and that's what makes this special the previous versions if you look at the fine print says that it might be analyzed by a human in order to improve the platform and could also be used for training future AI models. Neither of those things apply here. Google has been very strict since the very beginning about your data belongs to you, you're the only one who can access it. That continues to be true here with this version of the model. If you're paying for Gemini for Workspace, either on business or enterprise, it's all locked down, it's only you. Yes, it can access your information if you give it access. However, it's not going to be sharing that with the rest of Google or the rest of its AI model. Google goes to great lengths to make sure in every single one of their blog posts that you understand that your data is yours. It's not trained on your data and it will not be reviewed by human reviewers. It is as is. They've got everybody else on the consumer side to do that with. Additionally, the models are built with, and I quote, built-in safety controls to prevent harmful, offensive, and PII data to be included as part of the response. Gemini for Google Workspace has a robust set of safety features that are designed to help prevent the generation of harmful or offensive content. In other words, your most sensitive data, even if it's in your documents, is still safe and won't show up in results. Lastly, if you're still concerned, you should stay tuned because there are going to be more security features launching for the enterprise tier of Gemini for Workspace in the coming weeks. But what does it cost? Again, for anyone who is familiar with Duet AI, that was tiered that was priced in at $30 per user per month. That has now become Gemini Enterprise. So Gemini Enterprise, which is the highest level tier, costs $30 per person per month and is an add-on to your existing Google Workspace licenses. The new tier is one lower than that, which is called Enterprise Business. Enterprise Business is $20 a month and has one or two, at this point, major differences from Enterprise. The main difference being that it is limited to 1,000 requests. Now what that means is if you send a prompt, you send a request to Gemini, show me or help me write XYZ in this email. That's what. You didn't quite like its answer. Please refine it, make it more formal. That's two. Say you wanna create an image. You ask it to create an image of a mailman carrying mail down the street in the snow with their logo or their motto, no, nor rain, not sleet, not hail, etc., etc. That's one. It comes back and you're still not satisfied with that and you want to make it hyper-realistic, say, please make this a hyper-realistic image and make it nighttime, that's two. Comes back and you say, can you add in a dog chasing after him? That's three. Now granted, from all the research that Google has done, for most people, meaning not power users, for most people, 1,000 prompts is going to be enough. Just think about how long it took me to go through that whole process and talk about that. That was only three, maybe five, if you count both examples that I gave. Another thing to note here, and one way to help you be successful with less prompts, is that unlike what you would be used to when Googling something, you wanna use more words to describe what you're looking for. You wanna be very specific in your prompt. So think about what you're going to say before you put it in. So perhaps you would have said, create an image of a mailman at night with a dog chasing them in the snow. That would have gotten a lot more elements there and that would have only been one prompt and then maybe you want to refine it just a little bit, you do a second prompt there and that will save you that third prompt. The research that Google has done shows that the average successful prompt is 22 words. That is way more than any of my Google searches have been, well, ever in years. That's way more than my grandmother's Google searches are and those are long. In the coming weeks and months, there are going to be additional features that are going to be announced for the enterprise SKU only. They're going to further differentiate between the two. So if you're looking to get the latest and greatest, you're going to want to go enterprise. If you're looking for somebody who is just an end user who is going to be using the chatbot, maybe a little analysis in their documents, etc., helping them write, business tier is going to be perfect for them. 
Also, and this is something that Google doesn't usually do for smaller customers, you're going to be able to mix and match. So if you have, for example, a couple of power users, the admins and so on, who you want to have on the enterprise plan, the unlimited, they don't like me saying unlimited because it's really limited if you abuse it, but it's really not. Um, what was I saying? If you want to have some users who are on that plan and you want to have your regular end users or non-power users on the business plan instead of the enterprise plan, you can do that. Normally, if you want to have an organization and have some on one tier of a license and have others on a higher tier or a lower tier, you have to be above a certain amount in the enterprise pricing for that to happen. Thankfully, that doesn't apply here and you can mix and match as you choose with Gemini licenses. Everything that I've mentioned in this video up until now, unless I have said otherwise that it's coming soon, is available now. This is something that Google generally likes to do is they announce something now and then you get it a year from now and they're trying to work back from doing that. This is rolling out now, available now. As soon as you see it, you can use it, you can purchase it. I already have several customers that were on uh, Duet AI for enterprise before has already converted to Gemini AI and is of course upgraded and is on the new models uh, and have also seen in the sales dashboards that you can go and purchase it today. Should you buy it? Personally, I have found it very useful to be able to go into my inbox in the sidebar and type into, not Duet, <laughs> Gemini and ask it for context of an email. What's this thread about? Can you summarize this for me? When's the last time I emailed this person? Or for example, can you find the contract that this email is referring to? Even if it's not in that thread, it will be able to go back and find that contract. I had something just this week where I was trying to find out if an opportunity that was presented to me was going to be paid. In the email thread that I was reading, they didn't mention it. However, they did say in a previous thread several months ago that it would be compensated. So Duet, sorry. So, so Gemini was able to go in and not only find the email from several months ago from uh, that individual, in a different thread, it also understood the context that I meant compensated, which means the same thing as paid. Additionally, I have used it to refine my writing, sometimes make it sound more formal, sometimes make it sound less formal and more friendly. I've used it to expand things. So if I'm writing documentation, for example, I can write a couple lines, not in any kind of real structure, just bullets of what this does and say, turn this into a paragraph for a SOP, for example, and it will write it out and I can tell it longer, shorter, etc. however I would like it to be. I've even used it for writing scripts. I did not use it on this script in particular, but I have definitely used it on other scripts when coming up with ideas for how to present updates and uh, to read through my script that I wrote, tell me how long it should take for me to read it so that I can make sure that the video length is right sized and so on. I've used it for marketing posts, both in emails and on social media, and to help me write a proposal for a new project that I'm bidding on. In Google Meet, for example, I have used it to fix up my appearance. Just yesterday, I was playing around with some new features there. There's a new background of being in, sitting in a cabin in the woods. It's dark in the background, uh, it's raining, there's a fireplace off to the side. I'll uh, grab an image of it and throw it up here on the screen for you. And what I did is in the interface, you can have a orange light and a blue light, one on each side of you, which is very common in the YouTube world. I have this actually set up in front of me as well as a bright white key light. And in the Meet interface, I was able to click and grab and drag around where those light sources were going, to, were going to be shining on me. And the closer it was, obviously, the more intense it was. In this sequence, I put it down near the fire because the fireplace was going to be, uh, because the light was going to be coming from the fireplace. And as I move closer to the fireplace, you can see my face gets brighter. And then as I move further away, you see it gets darker. That's something I've never seen before. And that's something that is new as an AI feature. I also look forward to some of the announcements that I know that are coming, but I'm not allowed to tell you because then I would never be able to make videos like these anymore. And well, that would be sad. But one of them is automated note taking. And I just think that's going to be so awesome to be in a meeting and be totally engrossed in talking and have an AI bot taking notes for me on the side. Here's a trick for you. You can actually get Gemini Enterprise for free. If your contract is coming up for renewal with Google and you're working with a partner or you have a Google rep who you are negotiating your contract, ask them about lowering the price of your individual seats in exchange for Gemini licenses. Google is obviously very interested in a lot of people trying out the new generative AI experience and you are able to try it for free as part of a free trial. However, if you want to get those licenses for free, definitely use that trick I just told you about. If you're not working with a partner for Google Workspace, first of all, you should be. 
Second of all, reach out to either myself at Tab Geeks, or if you are working with a partner, then to your preferred partner, and they can help you get set up. There are many more announcements that are going to be coming out at Google Next in April. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, be sure to sign up now, and I will see you there. If this video was helpful, I'd appreciate if you subscribed and left your questions and comments down below. Obviously, I have access to some inside sources, so if you have questions that you're not seeing elsewhere and want answered, if I can answer them, I will ask around and I'll get them answered for you. If you'd like to keep watching my videos, here's a couple handpicked videos that I have chosen for you to continue watching. This script and video were 100% written and produced by humans. Thanks for watching.